So in this how-to, I'm going to show you how to create a three component like this that shows you department and employees working in each department. Okay. So um, we'll start with a basic VB app. We have business objects in our case. That's what we're using for the source of the data. We have an employees object over here. And one of the fields here is a department field that is a reference field. Okay, so this one points to the department object. And then in the data uh, of this business object, what you'll see is that some of the employees have department associated with them. Basically, if you go over and you edit one of those, you can tell which department to put them in. Okay, so this is the reference field. What we're actually keeping here, of course, is the ID of the department, which is coming from the department object. So what we actually need to fetch into the page is the departments, right? But we also want to fetch the employees underneath it. So one thing you would need to do is when you're looking at the master, okay, the parent, there's the relationship over here to the employees. You'll want to go and edit it and you will want to enable the accessor over here that will allow you from the master to also get the collection of the details. You can give it any name you want, Okay. I'm going to keep the default name here just for sake of simplicity. Okay. I'm going to copy it also because we're going to use it in a minute. So once we did this, if we now go over and create a new page in our application, so let's create a new application. we can now go into this page and create a new type of variable. Okay, Let's create a type here, and it would be from an endpoint. And now, because we enable the accessor for departments, if we now expand the structure of getting a specific department, you'll see that we are able to access the employee collection. That's the accessor we enabled. Okay, so what we want to fetch is we want the ID of the department and the name of the department and then for each employee um, over here, we might want to get the ID of the employee and maybe also the name of the employee like that. Okay, so that would be the structure of the data type we're creating here. We can keep it with this name for now. It's the get department type. And then we're going to create here an array. Okay, so we'll create a the um, depth array, for example. And the array would be of type from the type we just defined. So now we have an array where each record can be a department and in it we can have uh, the employees as a child object over here. All right, so this defines our data structure. Now we can define an action chain that would actually fetch the information. So let's do this um, on the uh, VB enter into this page. So when we enter the page, we want a new action. We'll call this one fetch tree. All right, so we're going to go into this section. And what we're going to do here is call the rest endpoint. We're going to fetch all the departments. So under departments, I'm going to get the default get. It fetches all the departments. And then we need to do the assign into our array. Now, one thing you'll notice now is if I go over to the assign and you look at what is returned here, okay, um, you can see, sorry, what is returned here, you can see that um, inside the item, Okay, we have the employee collection as well. Okay, so this is nice. We can then say we want this array to map to the array of departments over here. Okay, and um, now there's one more thing you would need to do, which is if you actually run this right now, let's actually run this and I'll show you what 
would be helpful is to look at the network traffic and look at the data that is returned. Okay, so we're running the page. Nothing is going to show up on the page, but you're going to see our REST call being executed uh, because that's part of the VB enter. So you can see over here, we're fetching department. Okay, and if I um, look into the data here, okay, um, you can see that while we're getting a pointer to the children objects, we're not actually getting the data about the employee names for each department. So to get that data, what you need to do is in your call to the rest, there's a section here called expand. This is one of the parameters and you want to map this into the name of the accessor. So remember employees collection, we copied it. And now if we go and rerun our page or basically reload here, Let's look at now at the call to the department. Sorry. You can now see that for each department marketing, I have the items in other employee collection with the names of the employees. So, so now we're back in our page and we need to add a tree. Now, um, if you, by the way, look for the tree, it's not actually in our component palette, but we know from the Jet Cookbook, there is a tree component. Okay, so you can click on it, by the way, and see examples. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the example that is based on JSON data. And you can see um, that's basically the tree that we want. And it's saying you need an OGA tree view. So let's go back to our page over here. <clears throat> and maybe you can't drop a tree like that, okay? But if you go into the code, instead of OJ button over here, okay, we can get code insight and then you would see that there is a tree view here so let's just add the tree view this way all right and by the way once you add this you already have all the properties over here for easy setup all right so let's go back to the tree example and in the definition of what you need to do they would tell you you need to construct an array data provider okay from your um, data and then assign it to the data attribute of the tree. Okay, so let's look at the documentation for the array data provider. So we'll go to the API documentation and over here on the right you would see um, the array data provider. Okay, and you can see there's a description over here and the constructor and what it needs is it needs an array in order to construct it. Okay, um, so we are going to use that function. Now in here, in the JavaScript here, you have this line of code, okay, that creates the data object. And this is basically what we're doing. We're creating a data array provider. So let's copy this, okay. Go back into Visual Builder, into the JavaScript part, and we're going to create a page module function that would do this for us. We'll call this one build tree. It's a function and we're going to pass to it my array of data. Okay, so that's going to be passed to it and then we're going to just paste the code from the cookbook. Okay, and this is what we're returning from this function. Um, now, we don't actually need to pass JSON. We already have an array, and we saw that this is what this function needs. So we'll just add a my array here, and we'll take the array and create a tree data provider out of it, okay? Using the key attribute ID, okay? Um, I want to show you a couple more things here. Um, the key attribute is basically the, um, this property over here, which indicates which attribute is the key for each record. Now you'll notice there's another property here called key attribute scope. Now, because we have IDs that are the same between uh, the master and the detail, we need this to be siblings. So let's go back here, add another property here. And this one needs to say siblings. 
and I'm just doing copy paste because this way I eliminate syntax error. And there's one more thing, which is um, our child attribute. By default, the child attribute is called children. In our case, it's not called children. So again, if you look at the JSON that they're using here, each of the children is under a children node. In our case, it was different. In our case, remember, we have employee collection and items. So what we need to do is specify that in our case, the children attribute okay, is equal to what we saw here, which is employees collection dot items. So this function returns an array data provider that we can use. So let's go back to our action chain and we'll call this function the build tree function. We'll pass to it the array of departments like that. And we can call this build tree so it would be a little clearer. And this is going to return an um, array tree data provider. We don't have this type of variable here yet. So we're going to indicate that this is returning an any. And then we're going to define a variable in our page. We'll call this our tree of type any. Okay, so this is a variable in our page. And in our action chain, we're going to assign a value to this variable. Okay, our tree is going to get whatever we built from the tree. All right, like that. So now we can go back to our UI and take the tree and tell it that the data for the tree is hosted inside our tree variable. All right. If we look a little bit more into the HTML code here, beyond specifying the data, we also need a template for what is going to be shown in each node of the tree. So let's copy this one and place it inside our tree, like that. Okay, and um, we don't have a title attribute, but one attribute we have, for example, is ID. We said each row has an ID, so we'll use that one. And let's look at our live um, tree now, and voila, we have a tree. We can expand it, and we can see the ID of each department and employee. Now, maybe ID is not actually what we want to show. Maybe we want to show the name of the department or the name of the employee. So that's easy to do. We can change this one to show, for example, instead of ID, we can show department. Okay. And then if we go back to the live, we can see the names of the department. But if we drill down, there's nothing here because we need the name of the employee. So what we need to do here is say, you know what? Sometimes we want to show department. When do we want to show this? And um, one thing you can do here is use an OJ bind if. So take this and surround it with an if statement. And if we have a department attribute, we want to show this one. So this is the condition here. And we can indent this. If we don't have this one, maybe we want to show the name of the employee. So we'll do this. And instead of this, we'll call it name, which is the variable in the name of the employee. Again, you should probably indent it correctly. And now let's look at our live version. Okay, we have the names of the employees shown here. So that's how easy it is to basically build a tree component in Visual Builder. So the last part in this demo would show you that you have those names of employees, but maybe you want to click on them and do something and pass it to some other part in your page, for example, some parameter or stuff like that. So right now, those are just text. So if we expand here, you would see those are just simple text and they don't have any events on them. Um, so maybe what you want to do is instead of having those as text, you would want to have them as hyperlinks. So let's bring in a hyperlink over here and set the text of the hyperlink to be exactly what we have in the bind text. So this value, like that. And then we don't need this um, bind item. 
and we can do the same thing by the way on the next level down over here okay this time we're showing again the name and we don't need this bind text so we'll remove it okay so in terms of the look and feel this basically still looks pretty much the same but it's now clickable links uh, which by the way means that um, those items hyperlinks they have an events associated with them so let's pick up the employee one and we'll do an event on it when we click on it right and what we want to do is we want to then maybe assign a value or just for simplicity we'll just fire a notification over here and um, we'll do something that it's transient and just gives us info about the name of the employee so how do we get to the name of the employee this can be a variable that we're passing into this method we'll call this one it's already built in the variable called details you can see this is what we have here on the action chain there's an input variable called details so it's now just up to us to pass in whatever we want to do that we now have the action chain in place you can go back to the page so we'll pick up the hyperlink there's an event here and we need to map the detail okay uh, so what we want to map here is for example the current um, record okay so we'll take the data pass it over we don't need the event detail in this case and for example we can pass in the name okay. um, like that all right so now if we go back into live mode uh, we can expand and when we click on Sean we get a message that says this is Sean and if we would click on Steve we'll get a message saying Steve so this is how you get access to the three nodes and the value in them